having all this, you know, fear and resentment and strife in her home. But I can tell you right now why that was. Because I was stumbling over the stumbling stone of Jesus. I was trying so hard to be a good wife. I was trying so hard, you know, I would hear, I would hear the law, I'd hear the commands of God, I would hear I'm supposed to honor and respect and, and do my husband only good as long as there is life within me. And I would think, yeah, I need to try harder. I need to try harder. But my trying harder placed me under the curse. My trying harder to be a good wife my trying harder to qualify myself for God's blessing placed me underneath the curse. And so when I began to understand that I couldn't qualify myself, that only Jesus qualified me, then I began to realize that I was righteous in Jesus, that everything requirement of the law was fulfilled in Christ that I already was blessed I already was righteous I already was redeemed even when my circumstances said no you're not all of a sudden I began to believe that I was it didn't matter what my circumstances said anymore I'm going to tell you the first thing that changed in me was my heart the fear the anger, the resentment, the discouragement, the disappointment dissipated. No longer was that Connie's way of life anymore because she had her eyes on Jesus instead of herself. And when I got my eyes on Jesus and I began to look to Jesus to help me, when I was struggling, you know, every one of us struggle at times. We struggle with fear. We struggle with, with discouragement, with what to do. But it's knowing that it's in Christ that all that you could ever need is found. It's if, if I need, if I'm having a struggle with my husband, if he's irritating me today or yesterday or last week, I can do one of two things. I can try to fix him. That don't work. I can try harder to fix myself. And that don't work. Or I can trust in the righteousness that Jesus has given to me. And I can run to the Father, the throne of grace. Where are you supposed to go when you're struggling? Where are you supposed to go when you're struggling with fear, confusion, disappointment? Dis Where are you supposed to run? The throne of grace into, the da into Daddy's arms. That's where you're supposed to run when you're struggling, when you're being tempted with sin. You run to the throne of grace. And you hear your daddy say, daughter, son, you're righteous. You're wonderful. You're qualified. Trust me. I'll work in you and through you and bring to pass my promise in your life. You run to the throne of grace. And you say, Jesus, help me. Because all who call upon the name of the Jesus will be saved. Let me tell you, with my wonderful husband here in my marriage, night, day, <laughs> darkness, light, my own human effort, my own good works, Jesus is my righteousness. And that's how simple it is. Do I still get irritated and frustrated and discouraged at times? Yes, I do. But I don't live there anymore. I don't live in the darkness. I don't live in the de depression and the discouragement and disappointment because I know that the way to being free from the curse is to trust and rely upon Jesus. And so I run to him and I say, Philippians 2.13, Lord, work in me. Help me, create in me the desire and power to walk in who I am. I can't do it by myself. I need your grace. Help me to love like you love, Lord. Help me to be bold like you're bold. 
Help my mouth to open up with godly wisdom like your mouth opens with godly wisdom. That's depending on Jesus as your righteousness. Just simply run into the throne of grace and saying, Lord, work in me. And when you do, peace comes into your life. The peace that passes all understanding, doesn't matter which area it is. You start running to Jesus. You start walking the path of Jesus. You start looking to him as your righteousness, and peace comes. Whatever peace looks like in your situation, that's what comes. In the storm, guess what Jesus spoke to the storm? Peace, be still. Whatever storm of life comes, because we all have storms of life, his peace is going to show up. When? When you trust and rely upon him as your righteousness. When we abide in Jesus, our lives bear much abundant fruit. And I no longer live in resentment. I no longer live begrudging. You know why the main reason is? It's because I'm qualified in Jesus. I used to think my husband was keeping the blessing from me. If he'd just straighten up, right? Not only did I have to straighten up, but he had to straighten up, and I was trying really hard, and he needed to try a little bit harder. And that's why I had resentment in my heart. But you know why I don't have resentment anymore? Because my husband nor I can keep the blessing of God from me. Jesus qualified us. Jesus qualified us, and when I believe that, there's no reason to resent anybody. Come on, somebody. There's no reason for resentment. You know what resentment is? It's you thinking somebody else is keeping something from you. Somebody else, if they would just do something, would make your life better. You'd have the blessing of God if they would just do it right. You already have the blessing of God. You're already qualified. It doesn't matter what opinion my husband has. I'm blessed. And he's blessed. Why? Woohoo! And the blessings that keep a flowing just keep overtaking us and overtaking us and overtaking us. You know why? Because Jesus is my righteousness. No more resentment, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more confusion. Jesus, you are my righteousness. You qualify me for guidance and direction and favor and blessing and financial provision and success and healing and health. I'm qualified. Because of Jesus, I can rest. I got a great big A+. Jesus alone qualifies us. And when we look to him, all that yuck dissipates effortlessly. You don't have to try not to be angry. You don't have to try not to be resentful. You don't have to try not to be jealous. All of a sudden, you know how blessed you are because why the spirit of grace is empowering you to believe, to trust in who you really are. And nobody in this world can take it from you. Nobody. Thank you, Lord. So you all get a great big A plus this morning. All right, we're going to go finish first uh, Romans chapter 11. Let's see how much farther we have here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Romans 11.25. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will only last until the full number of Gentiles come to Christ. And so all Israel be, will be saved, as the scriptures say. The one who rescues will come from Jerusalem, and he will turn Israel from ungodliness. And this is my covenant with them. I will take away their sins. Many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news. 
and this benefits you Gentiles. Yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. When I was reading this chapter last week, and I came to verse 29, I have never, I've been studying the word for a long time, 20 years. I have never asked the Holy Spirit what this scripture meant. Because when I was reading it last week, and I came to it, and it says, uh, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, all of a sudden, everything I'd been taught about that scripture came to my mind, but I was getting new revelation in this passage of scripture. I was understanding that this passage of scripture was talking about being holy in Christ. It was talking about the promise of of the blessing of Abraham, which is righteousness. It's talking about the forgiveness of sin. It's not talking about your talents. It's not talking about a special gift. I mean, we all have talents, and God does give us all special gifts. But that's not what this passage is talking about. The struggle is real. Life happens to all of us. But there's a better way to live. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Because of Jesus Ministries invites you to a Women of Grace conference. Experience powerful, grace-filled messages from Connie Witter, Nicole Marbach, Trisha Gunn, Gwen Myrie, Shannon Orr, Sherry Reether, and Christy Rose. Come be with us in Birmingham, Alabama, Branson, Missouri, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Morton, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're free, you're free, remember that you're free. You're free from fear, you're free from condemnation, you're free from guilt, you're free from trying to earn God's favor, you're free. For more information or to register, go to womenofgrace.us or call 918-994-6500. We look forward to seeing you there. I was taught for 20 years of my life that the scripture meant um, even if you live in sin, the gifts that God's given you, the talents, or if you're a musician or a singer or, or, you know, a healing minister or whatever that would be, even if you were living in sin, that gift was still going to be there because it was out without repentance, whether or not you repented or not. That is not what this verse means. The gifts in this verse means... This is so wonderful. I just simply said, Father, that doesn't even make sense. I was reading this passage and I said, this does not even make sense. This is not even what this passage of Scripture is talking about. So what's gifts mean? Gifts means deliverance, qualification, a free gift. It means you're qualified. It means you're delivered. It's a free gift. The word calling means an invitation. An invitation to receive the free gift. Okay? And the word repentance in the King James Version, or withdrawn is in the New Living Translation, actually means irrevocable. It doesn't mean repentance like I'm asking God to forgive me for my sin. Irrevocable means it's irreversible. It means it can never be taken away once it's given. The holiness, the righteousness, the forgiveness of sin, those gifts that Jesus gave you in Christ are irrevocable. Once they are given, they can never be taken away. The gift of righteousness and the call or the invitation to receive that gift is irrevocable. God will never take back his invitation. Never will he quit inviting you. And once you receive it, never will he take back his gift. Irrevocable. So I was, so so I was like, you know, when you get new revelation out of a verse, you're just like, oh my goodness, I've never seen this before. Oh my goodness, Lord. Wow. And then I went back and I read again the passage of scripture about being grafted in through belief and cut off through unbelief and and reading those scriptures and realized people use these scriptures to say that you can lose your salvation. And yet the very verse says 
The gifts and callings of God are irreversible. So then I heard the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, the question of the ages the doctrine of the ages, the argument of the ages is, can you lose your salvation? And the Spirit of God says to me, they're asking the wrong question. The question is, do you believe in Jesus? That's the question. Because if the answer is yes, you have received a gift that can never be taken away. If the answer is no, then we can pray because the invitation is going to be there until you accept it. So quit arguing about once saved, always saved. If you believe in Christ, you're always saved forever and ever and ever. The gift of righteousness is irrevocable. The question is, do you believe? The question is, do you believe in Jesus as your Savior? Then the gift of righteousness is irrevocable. Your good behavior didn't give you that gift, and your bad behavior can never take that gift away. Growing up, now I haven't thought this in a long, long time. I've been secure in my salvation and my righteousness for a long, long time. But when I was a little girl growing up until I was about in my 20s, I thought that my bad behavior could possibly cause me to lose my salvation. I feared Jesus coming back because I thought, what if I wasn't right today? You know, I haven't been living like just like I sh- I've been fighting with my husband too much. Maybe I won't be good enough when Jesus comes back. Your good behavior didn't get you the gift of righteousness. And your bad behavior can never take that righteousness away. You didn't earn it by your good works. You can't lose it by your bad works. This gift is irrevocable. And the question is, do you believe in Jesus as your Savior? Because if you do, you're grafted in. And it's your faith in Christ that seals your salvation, your righteousness forever. For the gift of righteousness, qualification, and the invitation to receive that gift is irrevocable. It can never be taken away once it's given. I don't know why that hit me so hard. I just thought, you know what? I never have to argue that question with anybody ever again. Do you understand what I'm saying? You never have to argue once saved, always saved with anybody ever again. The question is, do you believe in Jesus as your Savior? If the answer is yes, you're saved forever. The gift is irrevocable. If the answer is no, God's grace is powerful. It's the divine influence upon a person's heart to bring them to salvation. So we don't have to fear if we know somebody who says, my answer is no. We can pray because God's grace, where sin abounds, God's grace much, much more abounds, and you have a promise for you and your family And you don't have to worry or fear. Trust Jesus in the power of God's grace because his invitation, it's irrevocable. (laughs) I'm about to float out of here. Thank you, Lord. Is anybody getting something good out of this today? Woohoo! The question of the ages has been answered this morning. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) All right, so I'm going to go in. Oh, we're coming in for a land in here. Just a few more verses, and I'm done. It's all about Jesus. Everything comes from him, lives through him, and ends in him. 
verse 30 through 36. Once you Gentiles were, re were rebels against God, but when people of Israel rebelled against him, God was merciful to you instead. Now, you are the now they are the rebels, and God's mercy has come to you so that they too will share in God's mercy. For God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience. So why? So he could have mercy on everyone. See, he... he Oh my gosh, the standard of holiness that God has is so high that man couldn't do it on their own. So, so God made the standard so high so he could have mercy on everybody. Everybody, doesn't matter how bad you've been. God's mercy is for everybody. And let me tell you something, we're going to see murderers in heaven and people who thought they were righteous, not there. Because it's not about your goodness. It's not even about your sin. It's about your faith. In Jesus, everything is about him. He imprisoned us all in, so that he could have mercy on us all. Does that make sense to you all? It makes perfect sense to me. It's like, wow, God. You made it so I didn't have to try to be good enough. You made it so you could just have mercy on me because I could never be good enough. That's great, awesome love. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? And who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him. For everything comes from him. Exists by his power. And is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. When I was reading this scripture this week, it reminded me of Ephesians in the Message Bible where it says, Everything is summed up. In Jesus. The answer to every question is Jesus. The answer to every question is summed up in Jesus. Everything is from him. Everyone lives through him. And it goes back to him. Listen to this in the Message Bible. Romans eleven thirty two. Through 36 in the Message Bible. In one way or another, God makes sure that we all experience what it means to be outside so that he can personally open the door and welcome us back in. Have you ever come on anything quite like this extravagant generosity of God? This deep, deep wisdom? It's way over our heads. We'll never figure it out. And there, is there anyone around who can, who, can explain, who can explain God? Anyone smart enough to tell him what to do? Anyone who has, wait a minute. Anyone who has done him such a huge favor that God has to ask his advice? Everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory, always praise. Yes, yes, yes. It's summed up in Jesus. Jesus alone qualifies man. And if you try to go another way, you'll end up disappointed. But if you'll give up your way, give up your good works, give up your human effort, and focus and rely and trust in Jesus, you will never be disappointed. Because everything comes from him, lives through him, is summed up in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Awake to righteousness. Your righteousness is secure forever through your faith in Jesus alone. You are qualified, blessed, favored, healed, delivered, forgiven through faith and not through any works of your own. Everything is from him, through him, and to him. It's all about Jesus. Trust him as your righteousness in every situation, and you will truly live and bear much abundant fruit. Amen. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, 
forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness Volume 2 and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now, Awake to Righteousness Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. The struggle is real. Life happens to all of us. But there's a better way to live. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Because of Jesus Ministries invites you to a Women of Grace conference. Experience powerful, grace-filled messages from Connie Witter, Nicole Marbach, Trisha Gunn, Gwen Myrie, Shannon Orr, Sherry Reether, and Christy Rose. Come be with us in Birmingham, Alabama, Branson, Missouri, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Morton, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're free, you're free. Remember that you're free. You're free from fear. You're free from condemnation. You're free from guilt. You're free from trying to earn God's favor. You're free. For more information or to register, go to womenofgrace.us or call 918-994-6500. We look forward to seeing you there. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.